the basic function of consciousness is choice to choose right there comes a point when you are choosing so rightly that the wrong option disappears that is called spiritual choicelessness but that is too far fetched man must have choice and if man usually doesn't have choice it means he is a slave to his programming if you have no choice either you are a machine or you are a buddha both have no choice we as we are must have choice when somebody abuses you you must have a choice to not to react but we usually have no choice in such matters you are being disturbed from something in the world you must have a choice to not to get disturbed you must have a choice to remain aloof and untouched but we necessarily get touched we are dominated we react look at water you take it to 100 degrees and it is going to boil it has no choice similarly if the man or the woman has no choice but to marry upon a certain age or to live by the religion of his or her birth then he is just acting like water molecules think of all the matters where mankind does only that which mankind has always done in all such matters we are abusing our humanity by acting merely materially by acting like the bulb or the water why do you take certain things as definite only truth is definite all else is changeable and must be subject to choice but we do not apply our choice in so many and most fundamental matters of life we say now i am x years of age so i must earn that which is certain can only be the truth except for truth do not take anything as certain challenge it and say why why is it necessary to follow the social institutions why is it necessary to follow the economic logic why is it necessary to give birth why is it necessary to wear as the others do why is it necessary to follow religious institutions why is it necessary to so to complete the so called education there is choice and because we do not have real choice in the real matters of life we compensate for it by unnecessarily introducing choice where no choice is needed we become very choosy about the food on our platter oh i am very choosy about the color i wear these are things in which not much choice is needed <clears throat> but here you apply choice to a tremendous extent the next world war is going to be about whether the ac should be set at 22 or 25 you see if it is not at 23 degrees centigrade right then i don't feel comfortable if you are setting it at 22 then i am going to fire at you that's the kind of perverted choice we live in and where we should have really chosen there there is no choice
if I am being married under coercion, what's the point in deceiving oneself by exercising choice about the wedding gown? You did not exercise choice where you should have exercised it. There you got married. There you said, I'm choiceless. I'm getting married. And you are exercising extreme choice in choosing your wedding gown. That's the kind of stupid choice I'm talking of. Where no choice is needed. Or very little choice is needed. There we are making very detailed choices. And the world too is offering us very detailed choices. You go to a subway. What do you want on it? Peas or mushrooms and 20 types of creams and 88 types of breads. You give me any kind of bread, I'm okay with it. But what? it depends on what you call as religion. Is religion the sum total of traditions or is religion the way to the truth, mm. no, that which you are calling as related to Hinduism, mm. Mm. I just don't see it as related to any religion. Mm. If there is nonsense, why call it religious? Mm. If you have to talk of Hinduism, just limit it to Krishna, to Ashtavakra, to Upanishads, mm. to Kabir. Mm. That's it. No, I just, I, I said Hinduism. Um, and possibly I'm very wrong, but... No, you're right, but because tradition, that's what Hinduism is identified with. All the rituals, all the rubbish. Mm -hmm. If you go to an average Hindu and you ask him, what does it mean to be a Hindu? Mm -hmm. That's the kind of list he would give you. Mm -hmm. Do this, do that, do this, do that. Mm -hmm. But that's not really the core of the religion. No. Truth cannot be tradition bound. Mm -hmm. hmm? When you want to look at a religion, first of all, do away with the rituals and traditions and the organized institutions, the temples and the churches. Keep all that away. Mm -hmm. hmm? Put that aside and then go to the essence of the religion. There you would find something beautiful. I have very little for Buddhism as it is practiced today. But this man is lovable, is he not? Hmm? Buddha, not Buddhism. Go straight to him. This is a very good exercise in real meditation. In the 24 hours of the day, ask yourself, do I have a choice in each of these little matters? Or am I just routinely working, thinking, acting, eating, speaking like a machine? And if you find that you are powerless in doing something in any other way than what you are currently doing, then either, as we said, you are a Buddha or you are a machine. Both are choiceless. Do you have advice for one who finds himself in the state of a machine? You are not okay with yourself. That's my advice. Don't pretend that you are okay. Burn in the fire of dissatisfaction. As a machine, only a machine can be okay and you are not a machine. 
you are a conscious being unnecessarily acting as a machine. You would be very, very uncomfortable. Feel that discomfort. Be more loving and sensitive towards yourself. Don't unnecessarily adjust to pain. And it must be paining a lot to live as a machine. Bring that pain forth. Acknowledge it. Cry. Weep like a baby. 